Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. On this video there is lots to negotiate about. So I am going to be giving you some more additional information on Jack Grealish. Then I'm going to be giving you some more additional information uh, on Jaden Sancho. Then I'm going to be giving you the latest news regarding Alexis Sanchez. I did mention this on my recent video. Then I'm going to give you the latest news on Thiago Alcantara from Bayern Munich. So let's get into it. So we'll start with the news regarding Jack Grealish. So according to recent reports, we have called our interest in Jack Grealish. Now, a couple of main explanations why we have called our interest is because of Aston Villa's asking price. Because I think Villa have said that they want around £80 million for Jack Grealish. And obviously, no, we don't want to pay that amount. And the other main explanation is because we have doubts that he can get into our starting eleven. Because if we was to sign Jack Grealish, then you'd say he would be a backup to Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba. You know, Jack Grealish can play as an attacking midfielder and he can also play as a winner. But Jack Grealish is one of our priority targets. Now, Aston Villa did stay up. So, there's a possibility chance that Jack Grealish could remain loyal to Aston Villa for another season at least. I did say, didn't I, if Aston Villa would have been relegated, then Jack Grealish would have left them. Now, up until this point, Jack Grealish has spent the entirety of his career with Aston Villa. He's been a Villa player since the age of six, you know, progressing up their youth system and that. And he's been in their senior squad since 2014. So this was Jack Grealish's sixth season in Aston Villa's senior squad. So in total, Jack Grealish has been at Aston Villa around 14 years. Jack Grealish has still got a few years left on his contract because he has got a contract of Aston Villa until 2023. Dean Smith, the Aston Villa manager, he's spoken about uh, the Jack Grealish transfer saga and he insists that um, Aston Villa would not be determined to sell him. But he also said next month Jack Grealish's future will be resolved. He is only the age of 24, I think. Um, he said quite a few weeks ago that Manchester City were interested in him because obviously you know, City have now had their two-year Champions League ban overturned by say yes. And back in the summer of 2018, Tottenham, you know, were close to getting a deal over the line for the player. If the opportunity was there, I'd take Grealish at Manchester United because he is well proven in the Premier League. His versatility is very, very good. He can also create chances and he would dramatically improve our midfield. We revealed earlier on in the season that he was our preference over James Madison. Don't forget back in March, Jack Grealish had that incident with his £80,000 Range Rover. Um, I think he'd crashed it into like three parts cars. And I think Jack Grealish had got fined around £150,000 for this. But reflect on what happened, that put Jack Grealish's move then to Manchester United in doubt. I think he also had um, a car accident after lockdown the other month. So I think Jack Grealish has actually you know, committed two offences. He did actually you know, say he's due in court in August. So now reportedly we have called our interest in Jack Grealish. So that is the latest news regarding him. <coughs> but I feel as though Jack Grealish is far too good for Aston Villa now. And Villa cannot match his ability. Now, let's delve into the news on Jadon Sancho from Borussia Dortmund. So, according to recent reports, Jadon Sancho prefers a move to Liverpool over Manchester United. Now, the main explanation for this is, is because Jadon Sancho has got doubts about, you know, winning the Premier League if he comes to Manchester United. He believes, obviously, he's got much better chance of winning the title, you know, if he does go to Liverpool. Now, as you all know, Jadon Sancho is our number one priority target and he has been our number one priority target for a while. Now, a couple of days ago, reports were coming out from the German press saying that, you know, we've had an £89 million bid turned down for Sancho uh, because it says we've set our limit and we're only willing to pay £80 million for the player. 
The Russia Dortmund have already said that they want around £109 million, but we are refusing to meet the Russia Dortmund's asking price. And Russia Dortmund's asking price does seem to be the stumbling block. It did say quite a few weeks ago that, you know, Jadon Sancho had allegedly agreed agreed personal terms with Manchester United and it is said he agreed a five-year contract with the club worth around £140,000 a week. Revert back to February, it said the exact same thing, that Jadon Sancho had agreed almost every little detail of move to Man United, but again, no fee had come to an agreement. At one point, it said we was only willing to pay £50 million for Sancho. As you all know, Borussia Dortmund have set their deadline for the sale of Sancho and Dortmund have said we've got until the 10th of August to get a deal finalised. Borussia Dortmund are now looking for replacements for Sancho because I think they've come to accept the fact that he does want to leave. You know, Dortmund have recently been looking at Jonathan E. Coke from Lille. They've also been looking at Uh, they've also been looking at uh, Rash Rashika from Werder Bremen. But yeah, but hopefully, you know, we can get Jadon Sancho on the board. I think we have got a greater chance now of getting Sancho because we have got qualification for the Champions League. If we hadn't got qualification for the Champions League, then I don't think we'd have got Jadon Sancho on the board. Sancho has still got a contract with Dortmund until 2022. Don't forget Borussia Dortmund got him for next to nothing. They only paid £8 million for him from Manchester City back in 2017. But analysing the performances in his few years with Dortmund, his valuation has persistently grown. If we do sign Jadon Sancho, I think he will be our next number seven. Because obviously we've got number seven vacant at the moment. But like I've mentioned before... We've had a lot of good number sevens up and down the generations. Obviously, you know, we had Ronaldo in number seven. We had George Best at number seven. We had Eric Cantona in number seven. David Beckham in number seven. Uh, obviously, you know, we've had some bad number sevens as well. Let's put that into the equation. But I think Sancho did reveal a while back if he's to leave Borussia Dortmund, his preferred option would be a move to Man United. And I've, I've outlined the reasons why I want Sancho at Manchester United is because he's well proven in the Premier League, he would dramatically improve us, and he's got a very, very good friendship with Marcus Rashford. This is why I want Sancho at Manchester United. Um, Borussia Dortmund, like I said, have let quite a few of their players go to the Premier League in recent years. Uh, they've also done some very, very good recruitment in recent years. We have been looking at a few alternatives to Sancho, because I will make an admission, these cheaper solutions than Sancho uh, we've recently been looking at Paul Torres from Villarreal. Uh, we've obviously looked at Figo Almeida. We've also looked at Rabi Matondo before. We've also looked at Ferran Torres from Valencia. We've also looked at Usain Dembele. So yeah, you know, we have looked at quite a few alternatives for Sancho. But I honestly don't know if we are going to get him on the board. Honestly, don't know if we are going to get him on the board. But, um, yeah, so that is the latest news regarding him. Sancho's now said he wants to uh, make a move to Liverpool. There were stories coming out a few weeks ago saying that City were back in for Sancho. And, you know, Sancho did enjoy two years with Manchester City. But the main explanation why he left Manchester City is because he did not get any uh, game time. Well, he didn't get any first-team opportunities under his belt. So that's the latest news regarding him. Now, let me give you the latest news regarding Alexis Sanchez. So, according to recent reports, Inter Milan want to sign Alexis Sanchez on a permanent transfer. But I think for this to happen, uh, Sanchez will have to take a pay cut. Uh, because like I said, Sanchez's wages at Manchester United are like 400 grand a week. Rising up to 500 grand a week based on the image rights and the bonuses. And I said if we could get rid of him permanently, it would free up our wage bill completely. Sanchez is on loan at Inter Milan at the moment, but despite the fact that he's on loan at Inter Milan, we're still paying the vast majority of his wages. 
Where's through paying Sanchez like 300 grand a week and Inter, Mil Inter Milan are paying like the other 100 odd thousand pounds a week? Inter Milan did get Sanchez on the 10 month loan last summer. Obviously, no, there was no option to buy included and there was no obligation to buy included. But Inter Milan do want to get him permanently. Um, I think it would cost Inter Milan around 17 or 18 million to get Sanchez permanently. Don't forget, Sanchez has still got a contract with us until 2022. I don't want Sanchez back at Manchester United because he did enjoy a difficult 18 months at the football club. We did get Sanchez back in January 2018 as part of a swap deal of Mkhitaryan going to Arsenal. And, you know, Sanchez didn't exceed expectations as we all thought he would have done. You know, because Sanchez at Man United failed to replicate what he did in his three and a half, four years with Arsenal. And he also failed to replicate what he did under Pep Guardiola's guidance when he was younger at Barcelona. And Sanchez now is in his 30s. Solskjaer, by the way, did say back in January that Sanchez would come back to prove everybody wrong. You know, so yeah, Inter Milan do want to get him permanently because he's been in a good vein of form recently. He was out with injury for a while um, in Inter Milan. Obviously, you know, he had that dislocated ankle. Don't forget, and he was out for like three months. But even if Sanchez, you know, was to come back to Man United, you know, he'd only get offered. He'd be he'd be only offered a squad role, wouldn't he? You know, he'd be, he'd be there as a backup because obviously, you know, he wouldn't get in the team. So yeah, so that is the latest news regarding Sanchez. Now, let's delve into news regarding Thiago Alcantara. So, according to Bild, which I think is a German newspaper, they have said now that Borussia Dortmund have revealed, uh, Bayern Munich, sorry, have revealed their asking price for Thiago Alcantara. Bayern Munich won just over £27 million for the player. Obviously, you know, Liverpool have been relentlessly linked with him. Also, to you know, we've been interested in Thiago, but I think Liverpool have emerged as the favourites to get the player on the board. Now, it did say quite a few weeks ago that Thiago had put his house up for sale and he confirmed that he does want to leave Bayern Munich. He says the other week that Liverpool were only willing to pay £18 million for him. It also said before that that Liverpool agreed to get it had agreed to get Thiago for in a deal with £31 million. He said Liverpool would pay like £27 million up front with £4 million in add-ons. If the opportunity was there, would you take Thiago at Manchester United? Obviously, he's predominantly a box-to-box -box midfielder. Obviously, he hasn't played in the Premier League as yet. You know, he's been a long serving at Bayern Munich. You know, this has been Thiago's seventh season at Bayern Munich. He's won a total of 14 major honours with them. He's made around 150 appearances in the Bundesliga. Bayern Munich did pay around €25 million Euros for him from Barcelona back in 2013. And Thiago has got, is it like a year left on his current contract or just under a year? And he is 29 years of age. So, yeah, just over £27 million. Pounds. That's a cheap solution, you know, for the player of Thiago's calibre. So would you take him at Manchester United? So that is the latest news on all of that. As you all know, our transfer budget has been revealed for this summer transfer window. Solskjaer is going to be given around £140 million to spend. Do you think £140 million is enough? You know, is it do you think it's enough for us to get, you know, the players that we do want in? Solskjaer has said that he wants to make at least three signings in this summer transfer window. He did recently say that Solskjaer was targeting around five players to overhaul the Manchester United squad because Solskjaer did say at the start of his managerial tenure he wants to sign around nine, nine players. He agreed this with Mike Phelan and so far Solskjaer has made four permanent signings at the football club and spent just over £200 million on them. Obviously, you know, this summer transfer window is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's fourth transfer window as Manchester, as Manchester United manager. But like I said, you know, Solskjaer has outlined his transfer plans after we got qualification for the Champions League, and he's told the board to back him, and he's also told the board to go out there and get his preferred targets. 
This is what he said. And Solskjaer's already identified the areas in the squad where he does want to strengthen up. Solskjaer has said he wants to recommend the striker in. He's looking to recommend a, a holding midfielder in. He's looking to recommend a winger in. He's looking to recommend the centre-half in, despite the fact that we've got seven centre-halves in the team. And I think some reports have said he's also looking to recommend a left-back in. Because there's still deficiencies in the squad where Manchester United do need to strengthen up. But Solskjaer knows that you know he's got the backing of Ed Woodward and he's also got the backing of the Glazers. Um, but yeah, you know we've had a fantastic. We've had a. You can say we've had a, a very, very good season. You know, obviously, you know, getting qualification for the Champions League and finishing third, and that's very, very good to say. You know, this has been Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first full season at Manchester United. But like I said to you before, even if we didn't get qualification for the Champions League, I still think you know Solskjaer would have been at Manchester United anyway. You know, he'd have still been here for next season. Solskjaer knows we've got to be competitive in this in this summer transfer window because next season he's going to have bigger expectations to exceed. Next season, I think our expectations probably will be to challenge for the Premier League title because, like I said, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013. So the last time we won it was in Alex Ferguson's last season. And, you know, this is in the seven seasons as well. We failed to mount any kind of title challenge up. Like I said, you know, we've got the Europa League games in August. Uh, we have got Lask on the 5th of August. That is the second leg because we are five and up from the first leg. But we are more like we are more or less into the uh, quarterfinals of the Europa League. But I think we have emerged as one of the favourites to win the Europa League. Uh, but if we win the Europa League, that will be our first piece of silverware under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. Don't forget, you know, it's been over three years now since we last won a trophy, and I think that's the first time since, like, the 1990s. You know, Solskjaer has now been at Manchester United over a year and a half, and, you know, he's been permanent Manchester United manager for a good, what, 15 or 16 months. We give him the job permanently, reflecting on what he did in that three-month period when he was the interim manager. And like I've said to you, know, I've seen a hell of a lot of improvements under Solskjaer. Um, I've seen a lot of improvements since January. But, you know, there's still things that Man United need to improve on, don't get me wrong. You know, there's aspects of our game that I've got to improve. You know, we've got to keep the ball better. Maybe we slightly need to be more clinical in front of goal. Uh, you know, I think our winners need to be quicker. Got to be quicker on the flanks. Uh, defensively, you know, we need to look better than that. But I've got to say a few things, you know, our recruitment has definitely improved under Solskjaer because we've been criticised for several years, reflecting on how poor our recruitment policy has been. You know, we've been criticised um, for overpaying for players because, you know, we have overpaid for players in recent years. Like I said, for several years, you know, there's been a lot of problems with the club's board. You know, there's been a lot of problems with the club's ownership, the Glazers. There's also been a lot of problems with Ed Woodward. You know, there's also been problems with the managers that we've had. So there's been problems at the football club for several years. And I think, you know, this season, our record against the top six sides has been very, very good because we've taken, like, 90, is it 18, 19 points against the top six sides this season. I also got to credit Solskjaer because he has uh, promoted the youth very, very well. You know, some of the young players have been given their chances this season. I actually expect more of the youngsters to get more opportunities going on into next season. Uh, I've also got to credit Solskjaer because he has got rid of a lot of the dead wood since he got recommended in to the football club. You know, you saw my recent video that I've just done on what players I think Man United will keep, loan out and sell. Like I said, I think we're going to get rid... We're going to get rid of at least six or seven players in this summer transfer window. But we'll get rid of players, we'll generate money, and obviously you know, that's going to help us with our rebuilding process. I think the players we're going to get rid of is Jesse Lingard. Uh, like I said, we'll try and get rid of Sanchez permanently. Get rid of Smalling and Rojo permanently, because Smalling's out on loan with Roma. Rojo's out on loan at Estudiantes. Get rid of Phil Jones. Hopefully we can get rid of Diego Delo because I don't think Diego Delo is good enough to represent Man United because he's our backup right back to Juan Misaka and he's hardly played this season because obviously you know Diego Delo's had a few injuries. I think he's only made one start in the Premier League. 
Um, Pereira, I think, you know, he's another player that needs to be sold because obviously, you know, he's now not even getting in the Manchester United team. You know, the players I think we're going to law now or try to law now is Tahith Chon, not getting enough game time under his belt. James Garner, I think we're also going to loan him out probably to the one of the championship clubs, either Cardiff or Swansea. Uh, Malik Twanzebe, there's a possibility chance we could loan him out. Fossa Mensa, there's a possibility chance, you know, we could loan him out as well. Uh, Daniel James, there's also a possibility chance that we could loan him out, Daniel James, because Daniel James isn't even getting in the team now. Obviously, you know, for the vast majority of the season, you know, Daniel James was getting a lot of starts. And he, he's done very, very well in his first season, don't get me wrong, scoring on his debut against Chelsea. We did get James last summer from Swansea for around, what, £15 million. You know, we got Daniel James. So he was a cheap solution. But towards the end of the season, you know, he wasn't getting in the team. You know, our preference is now Mason Greenwood over Daniel James. You know, because the vast majority of Mason Greenwood's appearances this season did actually, you know, come from the bench. But towards the back end of the season, Mason Greenwood was getting a lot of starts. And he's just, um, and he's just uh, recently, you know, recovered from an uh, ankle injury. So they're the players I think, you know, Man United, you know, could loan out. There's a possibility chance we'd, we could actually sell uh, one matter. I don't think it will happen, but there's a possibility chance because Juan Mata's now not even getting in the team. He still does make an impact, you know, when he does get a chance, Matter, You know, this has been Matt, Juan Mata's sixth season at Manchester United. You know, we did get him under the David Moyes era back in 2014. I think we paid just under £40 million for Mata. Joe Pereira, I can see us getting rid of him permanently. You know, Joe Pereira um, is out on loan, I think, with Hearts. So big decisions need to be made in this summer transfer window. You know, what players are going to come in and what players are going to go. Uh, probably Solskjaer's also got a decision to make on David De Gea. Uh, because obviously, you know, David De, Gea, David De Gea, you know, has received a hell of a lot of criticism recently. You know, reflecting on his bad run of performances. You know, David De Gea's made quite a lot of mistakes this season. You know, his recent mistakes he made was... The three-one loss to Chelsea in the FA Cup semi-final. Obviously, you know, Kunky uh, should have saved Giroud's shot. Also, should have saved Mason Mount's shot. He also made a mistake in the one-one draw with Tottenham. He also made a mistake in the two-one home loss to Palace earlier on in the season. He made a mistake in the Everton game, and I think he also made a mistake in the two-nil defeat to Watford. But in the last couple of years, De Gea has been a liability. Like I've said before. David De Gea has, has, has had seven good years out of the nine years he's been with us. David De Gea has made 404 appearances for Manchester United in all competitions. Solskjaer, Solskjaer was talking about David De Gea the other week, saying that he's been the best goalkeeper in the world for the last, what, nine or ten years. But to be fair, you know, David, David De Gea has won everything here domestically at the football club. And he's won individual awards reflecting on his good run of performances. David De Gea did recently say that he intends to stay at the football club for several years. And I did say, didn't I, you know, when David De Gea does eventually leave Manchester United, I think he'll go back to Spain. Main explanation is born in Spain, relatives from Spain, girlfriend from Spain, and also began his footballing career in Spain. We paid around, was it 17 or 18 million for him from Atletico Madrid back in 2011. There is a possibility chance De Gea could remain our number one for next season, but there's a lot of United fans saying that Dean Henderson should be our number one for next season. I think we'll definitely keep Dean Henderson. Um, we'll keep Dean Henderson, you know, Dean Henderson is out on loan with Sheffield United at the moment. I think he's been Sheffield United's player of the season as Dean Henderson. You know, he's had quite a few other loan spells as well with Stockport, Grimsby and Shrewsbury. Uh, we did get Dean Henderson from Carlisle back in 2011. We got him at just the age of 14. It's recently saying that Chelsea have been in for Dean Henderson. Uh, they're looking to get a goalkeeper to replace Kepa Ariza Belega. Uh, Chelsea have also been looking at Jan or Black from Atletico Madrid and so to um, you know Man United, but uh, we won't. I don't think we'll sell David De Gea in this summer transfer window. I really, really don't. I really, really don't. But yeah, decisions do need to be made. 
But like I said, earlier on in the season, we'd endured our worst start ever to a Premier League season. At that point, I thought Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was going to get sacked as Manchester United manager. I really, really did. But, you know, there was an upturn in form all of a sudden. And Solskjaer, prior to the Leicester game, was talking about how we have improved in that. And he says, you know, the team have shown that they are going places. And he says, you know, the players are progressing in that. He also mentioned that the fitness levels have improved. This is something else he did mention. But it's just since Bruno Fernandes came and, you know, he seems to have made the difference in the team. And it's just amazing how one player can make a difference in a team. You know, it's just amazing how that can happen. But like I said, reflects on how long now Solskjaer's been at the football club. You know, he has gained that managerial experience. You know, because Manchester United is the third club in his managerial career. Obviously, before he was, he was with us, he was at Mulder. Obviously, you know, he won a few, was it Norwegian titles and that with Mulder. And before he was at Mulder, he was at Cardiff. And to be honest with you, his record at Cardiff was absolutely disastrous. Uh, the main explanation why I got Satsum Cardiff is because he ended up getting Cardiff relegated and that did Solskjaer. And plus Solskjaer was a great player for us for 11 years. Um, he did flourish under Alex Ferguson's guidance. You know, one of Solskjaer's, well, Solskjaer's most iconic moment as a Manchester United player was 1999, of course, when he did win the club, the treble. And that's obviously, you know, one of the club's greatest achievements. You know, do Manchester United need to recommend a director of footballing, you know, to join Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's structure? Because there was reports coming out recently saying that Woodward wants to recommend a director of football in. And I did say before, didn't I, that's one of the structural changes that we do need at the football club. And I said if we are to recommend a director of football in, we need someone who knows the club inside out and we need someone who has got that experience in that. Recent names that have been linked with the director's role has been Andreas Berta from Atletico Madrid and Fabio Paracicci from Juventus. Yeah, you know. But like I said, Solskjaer is our fourth permanent manager since Ferguson retired in 2013. You know, like when I was critical of Solskjaer earlier on in the season, I still said, you know, he's not going to really solve any problems by sacking him because, like I said, Man United are not really known as a sacking football club despite the fact that we've sat three managers since the Ferguson era, and that was Moyes, Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho. You know, that's what I said, didn't I? But in the last seven years, Man United have been playing catch-up, haven't, haven't we? You know, we've had different managers with different philosophies. We spent £900-odd million pounds on players since Ferguson left, and we've recruited over 30-odd players in since the Alex Ferguson era. But like I said, you know, the vast majority of this team is not Solskjaer. You know, Solskjaer's still inheriting plays even from the Mourinho era. He's inheriting plays even from the Van Gaal era. Well, a few plays from the Van Gaal era. Still Matter even from the Moyes era. Still a few plays even from the Alex Ferguson era. But the vast majority of this team is Jose Mourinho's and that. But yeah, we know we've got to make some signings in this summer transfer window. Solskjaer said earlier on in his managerial career he wants to continue uh, the policy continue the policy of recruiting young British talents to Manchester United and that you know we know next season starts on the 12th of September to be honest with you, I can't wait until next season starts but yeah uh, like I said regarding Chelsea you know they could be now a shout for next season you know Chelsea have done very very good recruitment so far you know I think they've signed what is it two players but looking to get more players in you know the sign Werner they signed Hakim Ziyech. You know, they're looking to get Havertz from Leverkusen. I think they're still trying to get Ben Chewell from Leicester. But, um, yeah. But Solskjaer's happy about one thing that he's proved his critics wrong. Because no one expected us to finish, you know, third or qualify for the Champions League, you know, the way we was playing earlier on in the season. A lot of people said, you know, the way we was playing earlier on in the season, we could actually, you know, have been facing a relegation. But our actually, you know, could have got relegated. But... We haven't been relegated since, like, what, 1974, which is a good 40-odd years ago now. So, anyway, that's everything to update today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe, as always, and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.